and welcome to everyone uh, to our first year student parent orientation. My name is Bob Beretta. I'm the athletic director here at Lemoyne. I began at Lemoyne here in May, really was named in January and started on the ground here in May. Had been at West Point for 34 years prior to coming up here to Lemoyne. And I'm uh, really thrilled to be here. First of all, I want to thank you all for, for choosing Lemoyne, but also for trusting the college careers of your sons and daughters in the hands of our coaches and our staff. We don't take that lightly. It's, it's very important. My daughter just graduated from college. She was a student athlete. So I, I see it on both sides as a parent, uh, had coached for a year at West Point, see it as a coach, and certainly now as an administrator, have been an athletic director and, and a senior leader for the past 35 years in my life. So thank you very much. We know how important it is and, and how much uh, we value the care that you entrust into, into our coaches' hands. People ask me an awful lot about my interest in coming to Lemoyne, and it was multifaceted, but I can tell you this tonight, this type of discussion is what helps separate Lemoyne from every other institution in the country. What you're gonna hear about tonight about our shared culture. It caught my eye during the research process when I was considering coming to Lemoyne. And uh, it's unique. It's unique. It's integral. It's, it's foundational into how we develop our young people. It's, it's a shared culture. It's not talk. It's, it's a real life culture that's nurtured on this campus and in this athletic department every single day. We have uh, taken a look at it this summer and we put a committee together because the program has been in existence for uh, almost uh, a dozen years now. And, and we took some feedback from coaches and student athletes made some minor tweaks, but which we're gonna unveil really tonight to all of you before we do it publicly to anyone else. But the foundational elements and for what it stands for uh, has, hasn't changed. And, and it's really uh, something that, that is so intriguing that, that it excited me when I began researching this opportunity. And I hope it excited you all at the same time and, and you get a chance to learn a little bit more about it tonight. We're going to run through a program where I'm going to introduce, reintroduce Steve Evans, who has been integral in this program for, since its inception, former head coach here at Lemoyne for a number of years, and now transitioned uh, six or seven years ago into a sole administrator role, and has been very, very integral in the development of this program, very involved. We'll also hear from a couple of our coaches, Coach Sheehan, who is the men's lacrosse coach, six-time national champion and Tracy Roman, our softball coach, who's taken over a program and already injected life and spirit. And I think great things will be coming forward with that program in the years to come. And then finally, we're gonna hear from a couple of our student athletes and, and let you hear from their, from their, in their words, what this program has meant to them during their time here at the Heights. At the end, I'll come back and kind of run through the foundational elements of this year's program and the practical uh, approach that we're gonna take to it. So with that, and we'll also open it up to any questions that, that you might have. So with that, uh, it's my honor to introduce Steve Evans, our Associate Athletic Director, and uh, he's going to take uh, a little bit of time to, to describe what this program has meant to him personally, but also to what it means to our student athletes here at Lemoyne. So Steve, the floor is yours. Thank you, Bob. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen, hopefully uh, be able to see it and uh, we can get started here. Um, as we get, uh, get into uh, the programming for this year, the Lemoyne Way, what's it all about? Uh, it all started about uh, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, as uh, Mr. Beretta had mentioned. Our, our trustees got together and they wanted to make Lemoyne different. In what way can we become a nationally premier Division II athletic department in the Jesuit tradition? Uh, so what we did was we strove to get a, a mission-driven, intentional shared culture. Uh, we wanted it to align, obviously, with the strategic priorities of the school, the 500-year-old Jesuit tradition. And what we did is we talked to parents, we talked with uh, student athletes, we talked with our alumni, and we went through uh, different Jesuit values. There's 27 Jesuit schools throughout the country. We happen to be one of them, and we share a very common language uh, when we get into some of the values that, that we'll talk about. Uh, in 2013, we partnered with the Excellence with Integrity Institute uh, out of Fayetteville. They helped us a lot developing our character and culture um, development. So that's something that 
that has happened. Now, with many places, uh, you put up a touchstone right away. We did not do that at Lemoyne. It wasn't until probably about our eighth year in before we put a touchstone up on the wall. And if you were to enter our athletic department and look to the right, you would see uh, these five sentences, excellence with integrity, et cetera. What we did was we took Jesuit core values. There's five Jesuit core values. There's plenty of them, uh, more than five, but we felt as we mined the different uh, Jesuit schools around the country, these were five that really spoke uh, to us and we felt that we could deliver that in an athletic way. Now, I don't think teams are getting together and putting their hands in and say, hey, we need some modules today. However, as coaches, when we got together, when we talk about the Lemoyne way and the five core values, excellence with integrity is in fact that Jesuit word modules. Uh, these Latin words in red, which might not make sense to your sons and daughters today, I can guarantee you by the time they graduate, they will be able to understand what these words mean and how they can live their life in a, in a very structured way with tools to help them become better people. As we talked about as coaches, I, I can still remember uh, sitting in meetings and talking about that word tough love to go with cure personalis. Uh, I know how much we struggled with finding God in all things. How do we do that when not everyone's Catholic? How do we do that? Is, is it prayer? How do we become spiritual beings who seek and embrace the sacred and social justice. So these are all the five values that correlate and align with, with what you see on the wall in our touchstone. The Lemoyne Way, our goals. What do we want? We want successful students, successful athletes, successful people, mind, body, and spirit, thriving not only here at Lemoyne, but after they're done. Ultimately, you're dropping your sons and daughters off at Lemoyne, and it's uh, probably a bittersweet time for most of you, I'm sure. But please know that we know uh, at Lemoyne when your son or daughter graduates in a few years, uh, we really believe that the next hire should be a Jesuit student athlete because of the programming that we're doing at Lemoyne. Now, when I say programming, it's not something that we're doing separate. Uh, each and every coach has a, an opportunity every day to work these values into their team and into whatever situation that they're going through. We say it all the time, it's not something we do for the student athletes, it's something that we do with them. I know Mr. Beretta uh, mentioned you know, how it has been impactful in my life. Um, as a coach, uh, I feel I became a better coach because of, of learning these Jesuit values and challenging myself to be a better person, better father, uh, better coach in all, in all areas. Uh, because as we say, you can't teach where you, can't, where you won't go. For instance, the word modus. When we look at modus and we talk about optimal performance indicators, we want the student athletes at Lemoyne to do these type of activities as far as the word modus, that's excellence with integrity. Uh, we talk about working on areas of weakness, not obsessing about mistakes, seeking external help as needed. These are all ways that our student athletes can practice that modus. At the same time, we also challenge our coaches in that same way with Majus, the performance coaching practices talks about motivating, challenging growth and improvement, communicating in a way that respects and motivates, helping teams learn from mistakes, clear steps for improvement. These are all ways that we challenge our coaches. And that's just one of the values. I'm not going to go through all five, but with all five of the values, we have different performance indicators uh, that we're challenging not only our student athletes, but our coaches. We also try to tell our coaches and our student athletes that we're striving for optimal, not perfect. We found a lot of times uh, our student athletes and our coaches were perfectionists. And being able to find that optimal place uh, is really the best place we can be and where we perform our best. Um, I would hate to judge any parent on their worst day. We're going to have coaches. We're going to have players. They're going to struggle. They're going to make mistakes. We're not perfect. Well, hopefully we're going to define, refine, clarify, and we're going to get better uh, with each opportunity we have to, to improve as we, uh, as we learn from our, our um, as we learn from the feedback that we get from the, the things that we do. I'm having trouble right here getting to the next screen. I'm sorry. Um, give me one second here. Here it is. So how do we know we live it out? As I was mentioning, we have an assessment that comes out twice a year. So our coaches will see this and our student athletes will see this as well. And what we do is we take all five of the values, our teams will evaluate themselves and our coaches will evaluate themselves and the team. 
And then what we look for when we go through is where are the gaps? Where can we, where are we struggling? Where does the team need to do? What does the coach need to do to improve and get better? And then the coach can have some conversations with the teams on ways that we can do things better. There's also, there also is programming when we talk about how we put it into practice. As parents, you will start receiving the Sunday playbook. It's a very unique uh, uh, thing that we do at LeMoyne each Sunday. Either it's a quote or a reflection or some type of uh, value that is talked about by one of our student athletes or coaches. And then we try to tie it back into one of our Jesuit values or whatever our theme may be for the year. We talk about a department-wide meetings. Uh, Mr. Brett will probably talk a little more about some of the speaker series that we're going to do. If you look at that triangle at the bottom, there's universal, there's targeted, and there's intensive. The department-wide meetings, those are universal. Those are for all of our student athletes. We also have meetings by classes. These are going to be run by other student athletes this year. These are more targeted, so that way we can build community. Freshmen meet with freshmen, sophomores, sophomores, et cetera. And with each of those groups, hopefully they're building a chance not only to know their team, or but, but also to learn from other teams. This year, one of the things we did targeted as well, team by team, we just finished up some social media training. We also tied that social media, media training back into our five Jesuit values. So everything that we're going to do is always going to align with our culture. Each team is also going to be asked to do some type of service partnership. And then, as I said before, our team of culture assessments are a way to keep us in check and kind of give us a score of how we're doing. Well, that's a lot I've thrown at you. And I think, uh, you know, when we try to break it down a little bit easier for our student athletes, we try to pick one theme every year. And what the themes do is they kind of crunch those, those Jesuit values and our touchstone into a catchy phrase that hopefully student athletes will remember and coaches can use that as a rallying point. So this year, our theme is gratitude attitude. When we talk about gratitude attitude, it's a choice. It's something we have to put on. We have a choice every day when we get up, what type of attitude we're gonna have. How are we gonna look at a situation that may happen and reframe that situation into a positive thing? Gratitude is easy uh, when things are going good, when you're winning, but there's also, we're trying to teach our student athletes that there's gratitude for adversity, the acceptance, the faith, the hope, to know that um, something good will come from it. And I think that's something that, that next week when we have our all department meeting, we're gonna focus a lot on the, the gratitude attitude piece. We know from the research that is out there that obviously having a positive attitude um, can really help with mental wellness. As we look through a lot of these books, um, we pull some of this stuff and some of our teaching uh, with our student athletes. So it's not something we're making up. When we talk about gratitude attitude, we're gonna also ask for your help. Just like this person lifting weights is being spotted. We know there has to be tension for, for there to be growth. In the weight room, if you're not struggling a little bit, you're probably not getting stronger. Your sons and daughters may struggle for the first time. Maybe athletics has been a little bit easy for, for them at the high school level. Maybe they've started their whole career. Now maybe they're behind somebody. Maybe the coach is getting on them in a way that they haven't been, you know, really pushed before in high school. We're going to know that that phone call is going to be coming home to you. You're the first person. I know when I was in college, first person I called when something went wrong was mom and dad. And I, I just want you to know that you also can help us. Help us. Know that, that this tension and this struggle that your son or daughter is going through is a good thing, that they're going to learn from it, they're going to grow from it, they're going to get better. At the same time, when you looked at that triangle, if you feel that your son or daughter has reached a point where they're up in that red part of the triangle where they're really struggling in a way that we need to, to take some positive action and help them, there are places on our campus where we can get your son or daughter, the help that they need. But we need your help in communicating to us as well. So we hope that with this gratitude attitude theme this year, that together we're gonna see positive experiences from, from all of our student athletes. When we talk about the Lemoyne way, we talk about unique formation, unique community. This plus symbol, extending the plus, is something that we take with gratitude attitude this year. 
We talk about extending the plus to others, giving others the benefit of the doubt, knowing that um, everyone comes from different places, everybody's going through. Um, and I think for the most part, most people have good intention and their intention might be good, but how we receive that could get twisted sometimes based on how we are uh, feeling that day. Um, we ask, our, we're going to ask our student athletes, we're going to ask our coaches to extend the plus, give other people the benefit of the doubt, and, and really use that word uh, this year in a way with gratitude attitude. Lemoyne was very fortunate in 2016. We were invited to the sport at the service of humanity that was at the, uh, hosted at the Vatican. We were the only college in the United States uh, that was invited to this summit. And it was because of the programming and because of the culture that we have put in place. It's very unique. And now other Jesuit schools are using it. I know that Scranton uses our program. I know that Fairfield is using our program. And we've been in contact with, with uh, Georgetown as well, another Jesuit school that is interested in learning more on how to do these Jesuit values in athletics. I can tell you that we've had sustain, sustained excellence without much more money going into our budgets. We have been able to reach, uh, achieve success, not only in the classroom, but also on the court, in the field, also in many different ways. Um, I even think through the pandemic, we relied on our core values and we were on our way probably last spring to having the best spring that we ever had uh, had it not been for an NCAA committee that uh, didn't allow our, our women's lacrosse. But uh, the last full year that we had was 2018-19. And I really think that with each year of this program, we've gotten to a place where all of our teams are, are really functioning at a high level. And the ones that aren't are improving and getting better uh, with each year. We really believe we do have a nationally premier Division II athletic department. We've developed it based on the fundamental Jesuit ideals translated into the highest aspirational goals of intercollegiate participation. We monitor it, we measure it, and we really believe it's what it's that secret ingredient that has made Lemoyne um, such a, a great place to be a student athlete. With that, I'm going to stop my part and I'm going to turn it over. I believe Coach Sheehan is going to go next, maybe give a little reflection uh, and, and, uh, I know Danny's been with, with me for the 20 years that I've been here at Lemoyne and we've kind of, uh, grown up with this program together. So Danny, it's all yours. Yeah. Good, good evening, everybody. And, and thank you, Steve. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm sitting here today, you know, both as a coach that's been in the department for, for quite some time. Um, and, and also, uh, the, the parent of our current Lemoyne student, uh, current Lemoyne student athlete. So, um, you know, this, this is a program that, uh, you know, I, I think, I think everybody on this call has, has something in common. Um, you know, it's, it's a little bit more than maybe everybody likes pizza or, or whatever, but everybody chose, uh, to send your son or daughter, <clears throat> excuse me, to Lemoyne college. Um, and, and we take, we uh, as an athletic staff take that very, very seriously. Um, it's, it's more than just winning, uh, in my case, lacrosse games. Um, <clears throat> you know, when, when you talk about culture and you talk about a, a, a shared way of doing things, it's not just within, within my team. It's within the hallways of the athletic department. Um, just today, as a staff, uh, all of our head coaches had a staff meeting today <clears throat> excuse me. And, and, uh, and we talked about best practices for our, for our upcoming doc joiner weekend, uh, at the end of September and, and how we can make this event, um, something special for our student athletes, uh, for our alumni and, and for you as, as parents, um, you know, it, it, it truly is a, an opportunity for all of us, uh, you know, as coaches, I've had the, the opportunity to, to speak with, um, the women's basketball team, the women's volleyball team, the men's basketball team, and, and getting in front of these student athletes, um, it makes walking the hallways a lot more enjoyable. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty easy these days for kids to walk by you with their AirPods in, uh, head down and, and just keep on trucking along. Um, 
you know, but, but when, when we have an opportunity to meet them and chat with them, uh, you know, it, it makes those conversations in the hallway. Hey, what's going on? How was your summer? Uh, tell me about your internship that you had. So uh, this, this program for, for my, my program, the men's lacrosse program has, has been tremendous. Um, you know, talking about gratitude, attitude, uh, you know, just being so thankful that we have the opportunity to, to play the sport that we love, um, attend a, uh, an institution that's going to take care of you along after uh, you walk across the stage. So, um, you know, I, I, I would encourage your sons and daughters to reach out to their coaches. Probably if, if you're the parent of a freshman, uh, it's probably a limit, little intimidating the first couple of weeks on campus. Uh, you know, we, we, I'm in the, the process of sending text messages. And, you know, when I say jump, it's, it's how high. Uh, but as they go through this process and they understand that, um, you know, we're, we're, we're super concerned, not only for the four years that they're here, but uh, that we're help positioning them for success for the next 40 years of their working life. So um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a, uh, as I said, it's a tremendous opportunity that we as a staff has, have to work with your son or daughter uh, and we, we take it very seriously. Thanks, Tracy. Coach. Oh, Tracy, yep. wanna go ahead? No, Steve, I was just gonna say thank you, Coach Sheehan. And, and I think we have Coach Roman on now, uh, our women's softball coach, and, and I'd like to have Tracy share some of her thoughts about the program. Thanks, Bob, and thanks everybody for, for coming tonight. Welcome to the family, as, as we would say. Um, you know, as being one of the newer coaches here, hired at the end of October in 2019, I've really had a couple of COVID years um, and not a normal season yet. But I think what's great about the Inside the L program and what's unique about it is it provides really a wonderful template for coaches to use um, and incorporate, you know, what they already might be doing in their coaching practices, but really dive deep into um things that are important for them to not only be good teammates, but to also be good students and just good human beings. And I think, as Dan said before, we all um, share a commonality here. And I think we're all wanting to produce and have our kids um, grow here to be productive and, you know, productive members of the key and, and, and work someday in their families. And we want to do whatever we can to help improve that. Um, I know just in the short time that I've been here, Yes, some of the terminology can be a little overwhelming and there might be a learning curve to that, but I think we do a really good job at um, making it understandable to, to the student athletes. Um, you know, just ways we've employed it in the softball program, for example, you know, care personalis, tough love and total care of the person. You know, I had a team, I, I um, had a culture when I first came here that really needed to work on this stuff. Um, they were very, they were very friendly with one another, but weren't willing to have the difficult conversations and face some of the hard truths between one another as teammates to really grow. And, you know, through the Inside the L program, we find, you know, we can bring in speakers, we brought in a communication specialist, and we're able to, to kind of attack that. The community service element of it, I think, is super important. Many of the organizations and nonprofits that our athletes serve are organizations that people usually only come across when they're in a crisis situation, whether it's St. Jude's or Relay for Life or a suicide prevention walk, um, nobody ends up, you know, thinks they're going to end up in these situations, but it gives our, our student athletes valuable insight as what people deal with that may be different than what they deal with. Uh, I think it, it helps develop the total person as far as becoming more empathetic and understanding, um, which really is going to make them better people, better teammates. Um, athletic success is obviously hugely important and, and part of the, the, the pitch and what we're all about here, but we want to, in the end goal is to produce good human beings and not that they aren't already, but we want to constantly raise the bar as, which goes along with Majus and finding ways to constantly raise, raise the bar and get just a little bit better every single day. So this program challenges us to do this. I think it's true that we do have one specific theme every year, but it's really hard, um, I think they all sort of bleed into one another. So it's really hard to completely focusing on one without, you know, really digging into the others as well at times. But, you know, coming from a place where I've worked at very large institutions before in athletic departments, what we have here at Lemoyne is completely unique. And as Coach Sheehan mentioned before, 
it is nice to see the kids in the hallways and interact with them on a more pro level, even if they have nothing to do with our sport or what we do. It's really nice to see the athletes intermix. So it's, it's really, really special. Your kids are in, I think, excellent hands um, with our department here and in, in, in what we're trying to provide with this program. And, and what's great about the school is we're always looking at ways that we can improve the program, which um, you know, we're excited that we're able to do. So that's my take as someone that's been here for a couple of years but it, it really does make a difference. And um, it's nice to see the growth in, in the student athletes as they progress through the years. Coach, thanks very much. Appreciate your feedback and, and valuable input. So you've heard from a couple of our coaches. We thought it was really important for you all to hear from a couple of our student athletes. And we're really fortunate tonight to have Ellie Summers, a member of our women's swimming program, but also the president of our SAC, our student athlete advisory committee on tonight, and also Ju Farino, uh, a member of our, our baseball team. So love to have them share some thoughts with you about the impact the program has had on their lives during their, their years here as a Dolphin. So Ellie, take it away. Hi everyone, thanks Mr. Beretta. My name is Ellie Summers and I'm a senior on the women's swim team. Um, I'm very excited. Hopefully we'll have a normal year. Knock on wood. It looks good so far. So it's really good to be back on the heights here. Um, I want to talk briefly a little bit about why Inside the L is important to me and our team, especially, and then how we've also applied it to SAC. Um, so I, I'm a little bit biased in that department, but I love SAC. And I think we've had a really great group of athletes the last two years on the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. So I just want to touch on that a little bit. So I think in my personal life, um, Inside the L has been tremendous. I think it's a transformative culture here at Lemoyne and a tremendous experience. It's part of the athletic experience at Lemoyne. Um, I have friends at other institutions who play sports and I think I can tell you, you know, 100% I know that no other athlete in any other school or department has the experience that we get to have here. Uh, I think one thing that makes Lemoyne really special, there's, there's many reasons, but one of the main reasons I think is that you can be a utility player, if you will, in life and be involved in a lot of different aspects of campus. And you have a great supportive community around you. And the athletic community has really helped me and my fellow teammates and athletes um, be able to be involved in a lot of things and get connected with other, other areas of campus as well. So I think that's a really important part of Inside the L. Um, things like Magis, Cure Personalis, Men and Women for Others, Finding God in All Things and Social Justice, we really do live that out. It's not just a thing that we have on the wall by the gym, right? It's things that we live out and we see on a daily basis. I know Coach Sheehan touched on that and Coach Roman as far as when you walk around the hallways and you see people being really friendly, that's that's real, but it totally makes a big difference in your day. Um, we've already seen it on my team the past couple of weeks with our freshmen. I think just integrating them into this great culture you, it comes from the top down and the upperclassmen buy in, the coaches buy in, and then the freshmen and the sophomores start to pick up on that too. So I definitely think it's it's very valuable. Uh, in terms of SAC, we've kind of taken what we, we've we learned at Inside the Allen through our all department meetings and our cohort meetings, and we've applied it to our own programming, but I think it all goes hand in hand and coincides. So with SAC, we had a theme, we have a meeting every month and we have a theme each month. Um, so last year I served as president of SAC and this year I'm also the president and we've kind of tried to, been, we've been building this idea of themes every month and a theme for the year. So our annual theme this year is Elevate and Mr. Breda um, has touched on this earlier, but that's kind of our theme for the whole department. Um, so we're elevating this year. How can we enhance the student athlete experience and how can we make what we've already done even better? Uh, last year our theme was doing little things with great love for SAC and our our themes for the month, I think, kind of build nicely on each other. We talked about grit, and we talked about Angela Duckworth. She has a book called Grit, the Power of Passion and Perseverance. We pulled quotes from that book, and we analyzed it a little bit. As a student athlete advisory committee, uh, we rehashed that and kind of broke it down into you know terms that we can understand on a daily basis. So we talked about grit. We talked about leadership, hope, uh, turning the light on for others. And we talked about enjoying the moment and not obsessing over the past or the future. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. We're going to try to build that more this year, but I think this is just, you know, a tangible example of things that Inside the L has taught us and ways that students on campus are able to be involved. Um, so each team has two student athlete representatives, and I think it's just a tremendous way to build the community, but we've, we've expanded SAC a little bit, and we've talked to the freshmen about it, so we've got people on the committee as well who can come and get involved, regardless of whether or not they vote on our, our NCAA legislation, so that's pretty cool. 
Um, and lastly, I just wanted to close with something that, you know, applying to my, my future, my life, I think the values that we learn inside the out, we can take with us wherever we go. Um, I know a student who graduated a few years ago who's now in law school. And I think, you know, some of these values and the things that we talk about at our meetings are applicable to interviews, to real life, to your your day to day job and all of that. So that's one example. Um, I'm hoping to go to medical school next year. And I it's funny, I actually read a book this summer called Being Mortal by a doctor named Atul Gawande. And in this book, it has a quote where it says, culture is the sum total of shared habits and expectations. And I think that's what that's what we are. We are a culture. This isn't a program. It really is a culture that's deeply rooted and ingrained in our community. So that's my take on it. Um, I'm a big fan. Glad your kids are here at LeMoyne. <laughs> Thanks, Ellie. That's tremendous. I'd like now to introduce Drew Fiorino, catcher on our baseball team. And Drew can share some of his thoughts as well. Thanks, Mr. Barada. Everyone, great to see you. Nice to meet you. Um, like Bob said, uh, my name is Drew Farino. I'm currently a fifth-year senior, a COVID senior, if you will, mm -hmm. on the baseball team. Um, my undergrad, I studied business analytics and marketing. And in the MBA program, I am focusing on analytics. And I'll be finishing that up in next semester, the spring semester. Um, so when I first came to the Heights, Inside the L was one of the first things that greeted me from the athletic department. And at the time, being unsure of what its purpose was, I was kind of hesitant to buy into the process. Um, as time went on, after becoming more familiar with the topic and its purpose that it serves, I started using some of the things we learned about here and there without really noticing it, especially the topic that uh, we talked about with excellence with integrity and finding God in all things. Um, I found myself applying this mentality on the baseball field, but also in the classroom. Um, I, remember, I remember appreciating the good days on the field and in the classroom as well. And when I was having a bad day, I would find myself looking back on those positive days and remembering how I felt in the moment and vice versa. When I was having a good day in the field, I remember how I felt on the not so good days. And it allowed me to appreciate the good days in either scenario that much more. Uh, now, over the past two years with COVID, the theme of care personalis or care for the whole person certainly applied in the lives of my teammates and myself, um, you know, without being able to see one another, our classmates, our friends, professors, coaches, you know, during that quarantine period, we weren't allowed to play the sport we love and we had to find different ways to keep ourselves busy and to keep our mental and physical health a priority. Um, now, in order to keep all of that healthy and to get through those tough times, um, we looked to one another, but we also did a lot of self-reflection in the meantime. And the best way I can describe it was I don't think I would have had the same mindset I did during that time if I didn't experience what Inside the L was all about. And now the Lemoyne way and coinciding that with the Jesuit values that Lemoyne has instilled in us has definitely helped me get through several transitions in my life, whether it was transitioning to college, um, a whole lifestyle that that was different than high school coming from a small town or the whole COVID situation that we're still facing today. Um, obviously it's lightened up a little bit, but there's still days that you can't really do things that you would have normally, or you have to make sure that you have your mask with you. And it really allows you to appreciate times that you don't have to have it on, or you can hang out with your friends or family. And when times that it wasn't that possible. Um, so it's definitely helped me get through the tough times, maintaining a positive and patient attitude until we were back together and now being able to play the sport that we've played our whole lives and to get back to the classroom finally and to see everyone's faces, whether there's a mask on or not, it was still being in person was very appreciative of that. Um, and then allowing myself to understand how much growth I've had over the course of now almost five years. Um, I feel like it's my duty to return the favor. And if I'm seeing someone that seems a little off or if they're having a tough day in the classroom or at the baseball field, I feel like it's my responsibility to reach out a helping hand because if the roles were reversed, I would definitely want someone in my corner if I was having a tough day. And I just didn't want to feel alone. And I know that if I'm in their shoes, I'm sure it feels like you're on an island when you're the only one or you feel like you're the only one messing up or everything's just not clicking that day. And who knows what people have going on outside of what you see, whether it's a home issue, uh, health, whatever the case might be. So it's never a bad thing to check in and to give back. 
Um, like all else that I've experienced in college, what your son or daughter invests into the Lemoyne way is what they're going to get out of it. I've noticed that being a consistent trend in the baseball field, in the classroom, and even with relationships in college, whether it's a teammate, a friend, family, or a professor. So, you know, with that being said, I'm very excited for them to come aboard. Um, like Coach said, you're in very good hands here. From my perspective, I, you know, one of the big, biggest decisions of your kids' lives is choosing where they want to go to college. And after one semester, I wholeheartedly agreed and I was at ease with my decision. And I think that's very rare because I've seen stories about people transferring or not happy in a certain situation and doing the whole process over again. So I'm, I'm very fortunate that I've had to make one decision for the past five years and it was certainly the best. And I hope that's consistent with all of you and welcome to the Heights. Thank you. Thanks very much, Drew. I think that the past two speakers, not to diminish what Tracy and, and Coach Sheehan said, but you, you heard it from the words of our student athletes. And that's why we're so proud to be part of this marvelous institution. It, it produces people like Drew and, and Ellie Summers uh, who can say things in a much more intelligent and succinct way with a great deal of passion than, than we ever could as administrators. So thank you uh, to Ellie and Drew for, for those words and comments. Before we advance, um, I'd, I'd like to do a couple of things. First of all, I'd like to introduce Father Nash, and I'm sorry if I'm going off script here, Father Nash. I know that he's on the Zoom call. I believe he is, and didn't know if Father Nash wanted to say a few words, if he's available. I, I certainly, I'd love to say a few words. Uh, I've been at Le Moines, this is my seventh year, but it's also my second time around. I was here for 14 years, my first time around. <clears throat> I have such a, a great love for the place. And what I love about the place is it's a real community. It's a community that's centered on values. It's a community that shares. It's a community that, that really does care for one another. And they're part of the Jesuit values. Uh, the very notion of finding God in all things. It, it's not, it's, we're not, we are a Catholic college but this is not Catholic with the capital C. It's Catholic for universal. Uh, no matter what your religion is, the values that we teach, the Jesuit values are universal. And I'm so delighted to be part of the athletic program. I enjoy being with the athletes and going to the games. And I think this program does create a, a person who is fully rounded, a person who believes in what they're doing, a person who strives for the very best, and a person who cares for others. So we have an expression in Jesuit education that we develop men and women for and with others. So thank you for letting me say something. Well, Nash, thank you for your insight and apologize for not introducing you at, at the outset. Maybe we could turn back to you for a final reflection before we leave for this evening. One thing I think that separates uh, Lemoyne from any other institution is that this session that we're having here tonight, right? I mean, um, your sons and daughters are recruited. They're here. Yeah. They're already at Lemoyne, but we feel very strongly to have this opportunity to meet with you all and try to put any of your thoughts or anxious anxiety at ease to talk to you about the resources that are in place. Uh, one of the new resources that we put in place this summer within our department is a student athlete, an associate athletic, assistant athletic director for student athlete success. I know Liza Hillegas is joining us and, and she can wave. I'm not gonna put her on the spot to say anything, but uh, Liza is on our staff right now within our department. There are many resources here at Lemoyne if, if a student is struggling, whether that be with depression, mental health, homesickness, nutrition, sleep deprivation, whatever that might be. But we felt like we wanted to provide that resource right here within our athletic department. And Liza is someone with a, with a teaching background, has been a member of our administration for a number of years, a Lemoyne graduate, and we felt like would be a tremendous asset. So once again, please, we've communicated this already with your sons and daughters, but if you can reiterate the fact uh, that we do have this tremendous resource within our department right now, should there be a need arise uh, for them to see someone, we have that right here. Before we advance, and I really wanted to go over what this year's program is going to entail, I wanted to open it up for any questions that anyone would, might have. I know this is probably a very different session than you've been part of in the past. It's a different, unique program. 
It's a wonderful program, and it's one that we believe deeply in. We've adjusted it a little bit. We put a committee together, as I mentioned earlier, and studied it, and we've made some tweaks with, with some of our student athletes' suggestions and feedback from our coaches, and nothing foundational has changed. But I think we're trying to elevate, as Ellie mentioned before, and try and improve every day. And I feel like we've, we've been able to integrate some things that are and implement some things that will be really, really helpful in, in, in your sons and daughters' futures in terms of practical life skills. Anyone with any questions before we kind of cover the program a little bit? Okay, I'll jump right in. So I'm sure you've heard tonight a couple of different references. We, some of us have called this Inside the L. Some of us have referred to it as Lemoyne Way. I know it was in Steve Evans' presentation as Lemoyne Way. And so we are going to rebrand the program here officially within the next week. It has been called Inside the L, but some of the feedback that we gained from folks around campus and from our student athletes and staff was, to try to make it sound a little more inclusive. So we've changed it to the Lemoyne way and we'll rebrand it that way. And we feel like it's very inclusive to all of campus. It's not just meant to be a lifestyle for our student athletes and where we can reach across campus and involve and invite other members of campus to be part of our program. We are doing so in a very intentional way, yet also we have programming that's very specific to our student athletes. A great example of that is the social media training that we just conducted last week. We feel really fortunate to have, bring in, to have brought in what we feel are, are the best in the business. We use them at West Point. And I felt like it was the most valuable thing we provided our cadet athletes at West Point because it, it not only impacted their lives right then in real time, but it would benefit them for the next 40 years of their lives. And I felt the same way here at Lemoyne. We were able to get them in here on a short turn and, and they were here and trained all 385 of our student athletes. And it's really part of the Lemoyne way. But what I'm really excited about was the last 10 minutes of each session, while we held similar sessions at West Point, we tied it back to our Lemoyne way. And, and Coach Evans did such a phenomenal job and the staff of tying it back in. So the last 10 minutes of that social media training, we had a reflection period and we had great discussion amongst our teammates in the room and helped steer that discussion. We talked about how uh, the, the five core values would, would relate back to the social media training. And it was just wonderful discussion. In, in fact, the trainers who've been everywhere in the country from Notre Dame to USC and, and coast to coast and in between were just taken aback by that last 10 minute session that we did each for each team. We trained each team individually, for the most part, we had a couple, a couple of the teams together, but for the most part, there was individual training by team, very impactful, and the feedback has been tremendous. And that's part of our new programming. We wanted to try to inject some practical life skills into the program so our student athletes could have takeaways and see that it was something that was tangible that they could take with them and feel like it made them better. And I feel like the feedback that we've gained here just in the last three or four days from the training has been, has been outstanding. So the programming includes uh, this kickoff meeting. We will have an all department meeting next week with all of the student athletes. It'll be a similar product than what we're displaying here tonight. We will actually officially unveil our new program to them next Wednesday, but to give you all a preview, we thought we'd go over at least the treetops here tonight. As Ellie talked about, we do have cohort sessions these are uh, sessions meant to intermingle the classes and uh, different ways to try to facilitate discussion and reflection amongst our student athletes. This year, what we've done in the revised program of the Lemoyne Way is we're going to put our student athletes in charge of those cohort sessions, let the student athletes develop the programming and how it's carried out, trying to uh, entrust and, and arm our student athletes, empower them with the opportunity to lead on their own and come up with some programming that they feel are be, it will be very productive and valuable to them. We're also incorporating a speaker series. And we asked our student athletes, what would that look like? What should that look like? Should that be monthly? Should that be bi-monthly? Should that be once a year? And I think we've landed at a spot where we're gonna look at four speakers, two per semester, 
And we asked our student athletes to highlight some of the topics that they'd most like to hear from, uh, people that they'd most like to hear from. And we're about ready to, to finalize a deal for our kickoff speaker that'll start uh, our series. We'll begin with our first speaker in September. And I'm not prepared to let the cat out of the bag yet on who that will be, uh, but it'll be a major name in the athletics industry on a topic that'll be very impactful to all college campuses, but particularly here to Lemoyne. And I think just to tell you, as a parent of a, as now a former student athlete, I would feel very, very uh, blessed that our leadership, if I was part of that, took, took it upon themselves to bring this type of speaker here to talk to my, my son or my daughter. Uh, I think you'll be very excited about it. I know our, our college athletes will be very excited about this. So more to come there. I guess that's what we call a tease in the, uh, in the industry, but it's going to be something that I think will be really impactful. And I can tell you, we've also partnered with campus and they were part of the social media training. We offered that same social media training to all of our students and to our faculty and staff. And the speaker series will also be available to all of our students and all of our staff because it's a way that we can embrace all and bring um, the campus together as one so that we're not isolated on an island as athletics. We're partnering together. We're locking arms because we feel like these are life skills that are gonna be beneficial to all of our students here at Lemoy, not just our student athletes. We as student, uh, as athletic administrators, we're taking the lead in this space and, um, and we're being partnered by, with some great people on campus. Uh, another major part of what had been inside the L and now the Lemoyne way, and, and Mr. Evans touched on this earlier, was the team evaluation. We bring, we we're very fortunate to have Matt Davidson who heads up the Excellence with Integrity Institute right down the road here. And he was really the cornerstone in developing this entire program. And part of Matt's work has been in the past to, to create these culture assessments of our teams. We're gonna conduct two of these a year. We're gonna conduct one in December and one in the spring. But the big change that we're going to make, and we have a meeting with Matt this week, so I shouldn't talk about this until we finalize it. But our hope is that in listening to our student athlete feedback was, our student athletes never really got that feedback. They never got the assessments. So rather than wait until year end to provide them with the assessments, in December, when we have a culture assessment over the first three or four months of the year, we're gonna share that information with our student athletes so that if there's some changes that they feel like they can impact and impart on their teammates to change the culture in any way, shape or form, they'll be able to do that uh, as they head into the second semester, not wait till the year's over, and, and say, wow, we wish we would have known that. We could have made some changes to help improve our culture, uh, our approach to life, our approach to, to athletics. Team push-ins in the past were, were part of this program and they're still gonna be part of this program. Uh, and they're, they're just going to be on a voluntary basis. You may ask what a team push-in may be. It may be as simple as Coach Sheehan coming out to speak to the softball team or Coach Roman speaking to another team or some of our members of one team going out to watch how another team conducts its practice, how they position their equipment before practice, any of those types of things. It's really just to share opinions, to share feedback, to try to rub off on each other this, this feeling of excellence as we try to elevate our game and best practices throughout. So that'll be an element that we maintain in the Lemoyne way, but it's going to be more of a voluntary nature for our coaches to choose the best way to approach it for their individual teams. And then we made some small tweaks to the Sunday playbook, but I think this is like really super cool. This caught my attention when, when I was looking at this job. I signed up for the emails before I even interviewed for it because I thought it was just really powerful. And I thought, wow, this should be a model for all Catholic institutions really nationally. And this Sunday playbook is something that will probably start this week if not this week, it'll be the next. I, I think I'll probably be the first one. If I'm not mistaken, the athletic director will kick things off. So I'll have a message that'll go out. It'll probably be the most, uh, the least impactful of all the, that you'll read all year long, but it'll be the first one anyway. So I'll set the bar really low because our student athletes are phenomenal and they'll send a reflection each week about uh, something on their mind and whether it refers to gratitude attitude or, or something else uh, along that, that's impacting them for the benefit of others. It's a really cool thing. I, I 
I recommend that you all sign up for the email. It gets sent to you. We post it on social media, on all of our platforms. And again, you talk about a differentiator. It's something that separates us from any other college in the country. And it's the same thing with that social media training that we did. There's other schools that are, that are using those two individuals that trained our student athletes. But I can tell you there is no one else in the country that held that last 10 to 15 minute reflection period that we did. And I found that to be so valuable, so inspiring to listen to our student athletes talk about how that 45 minute session impacted their lives in, in real time. So with that, I will ask for questions one more time. Do we have any questions at all for myself or, or Mr. Evans or any of the coaches, our student athletes? Now would be a, an opportune time to, to ask those. We'd be happy to, to provide you with any insight that we can. Okay, hearing no questions, uh, well, I, I would just like to thank you all once again for entrusting uh, your faith in all of us here at Lemoy, not just the athletic department, but the leadership of this college. It's a phenomenal institution with great passion, great hope, great service connotation, and led by a tremendous president in Linda Lemura. She is just outstanding. And uh, I would also like to reintroduce Father Nash for, for a final reflection if he's available for that. Father? Father, I believe you're on mute. Okay, how about if we have a final prayer? Thank you, Father. Good. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, give of all good gifts. We thank you for this evening. We thank you for the presence of parents. We thank you for the presence of coaches in the athletic department. We ask you to be with us during this semester, that we might involve the athletes, that they might perform well, but also we might involve the athletes as people involved in the world, that they understand that we live in a difficult time and we under, they should understand that they can make a difference. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ, your son and our brother. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We're here to help. If you have any questions, we're all on the directory. Reach out. We're blessed to have your sons and daughters with us. And thank you again for your time and for your commitment to Lemoyne. Fins up, everyone. Thank you.